and the golden voice of Neil Rule. Sit back and relax. It's time for your daily dose of Big D Energy. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Big D Energy. Big D! Right here on the Woodward Sports Network. My name is Neil Rule, that guy, four-time Stanley Cup champion, D-Mac, Darren McCarty, in the house. We got Spencer Raxter. We have KG. It's a loaded Thursday today. Loaded, <laughs> loaded Thursday. It's a rest in peace Thursday because we were on site on Tuesday. It comes to find out it's a literal rest in peace Thursday. Oh, wow. uh, just before we took to the air, we'll get into that. The initial edition of the Urban Update with KG. You've been smiling like Chester Cheeto since electric. before the show. <laughs> it's going to be electric, everybody. KG brings us up to speed on the black community, right? KG, do yes, I have that pegged I, properly? Yes, I'm going to do my best anyway. So. Absolutely. So KG will uh, get us what we need to know with what's going on in the black community. And, uh, you know, an additional, an initial edition of the Urban Update. And we are going to try to shade away from the Black <laughs> Santa segment and try to keep this that's, together. Well, that's Uncle Terry's. That's yeah. Uncle Terry's. Right. Legend. So... This is like journalistic yeah. news update stuff. Absolutely. Can't wait for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so Also, Trevor James. Trevor James will join us at noon. Sporting director will sporting director. make an appearance. He's got to check in on his daily Thursday to make sure his, not only is DCFC, I guess he does that, but Big D Energy. Yes. Yeah. That, that everything's rolling good, so the boys will be on the best behavior. So, yeah, we're uh, action-packed. Big day in sports. You know, I heard Sam Flannel this morning on Wake Up Woodward say that if you were going to say that this was a big game for the Red Wings tonight, this would be the one. So, this is it. It, it is mean, the biggest Flannel, game, the you know. Biggest. And and it's funny because, like, when we had that discussion about the Wings and the Capitals game, everybody was like, well, I think, you know, I think 4-1 and one gets us in. Remember what everybody was talking about? That? I think 4-1 and one will get us in. Well, they lost the one. Yeah. And now everybody's out. But now we're back in. But this is truly, like, even for me, this is it. And this is the line. Here's the one tonight. thing, thinking about it even more, right? What do you want going into the, the playoffs? So is momentum. So the fact is, is that you will have to win to get in. So at least if you do get in, you will be riding some good hockey and a momentum of a winning streak. So, I mean, lock it in. Just uh, to be in this position because we haven't been in this position, you know, for the past seven, six years um, is something that I'd embrace. So. Right. Uh, playoff hockey at its finest. It starts. Uh, it started weeks ago, but uh, here it is. Yeah, this absolutely. Is a game seven. And, and we and we'll get to it coming up in the first segment. We have like the little analytics and stuff like that behind all of it, and uh, we will get in there. Uh, Seventy-one Mad Cat. It's a Trevor MF and James Thursday. Yes, yeah, it right. is. As a matter of fact. So, uh, so we'll we'll talk a little DCFC as well. Uh, but the news, the news broke right before we took to the air here on Big D Energy. Rest in peace, O.J. Simpson. Legend. The juice has passed. Uh, KG calls him a legend. Um, there are some that say that, and there are some that are like this. Uh, WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, O.J. passed away surrounded by family. Well, except his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It didn't take long, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> and, and I knew it wasn't going to take long. Oh, yeah. But this is part of the package, though, Mac. And we, we had a, a spirited discussion about OJ. So I, jump into that WilberSports.com chat thread. Right? I thought the best one I heard, right? Yes. Was the fact is, well, what he died of is someone said cancer, and was someone, else, someone else said exhaustion. From, looking for the real killer. Looking for the real he killer. He was trying, man. So. <laughs> he was out there in those streets <laughs> looking also, for Also, too, it. I wonder if there's going to be a white Bronco. In, in, the in the funeral procession, they gotta oh, they gotta heads. take him out in the in the white Bronco. Find a way to fit a casket. Great point. This will be a tough day for Maz. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Uh, Nick Hedigen, OJ is off to that great slow white Bronco chase in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Get it in, everybody. All right, it's, it's there, gonna be a day. There are some that that do celebrate OJ, Maz being one of them. Which I am curious to hear Maz's thoughts on. You know how you could just overlook being accused of double murder. Yeah, but what you know, different strokes for different folks. I'm again, I'm not here to tell you how to live. I'm not. I'm just here to oh uh, day juice. Yeah. Does the casket fit? Yeah. 
Jeez. <laughs> Man, hey, listen. Much like your uh, fireball take, you may not like it, but you got to respect the hustle. Uh, Mike G. OJ was a cut above the rest. Absolutely. I feel I do feel like this is a sad day, not it only is. because the juice left us, former Heisman Trophy winner, but because I think after today, DMAC, we don't get that anymore. And I don't know why the OJ jokes make me laugh so much. <laughs> probably because he's, you know, was accused of double murder. Yeah. Um, that's probably why it does. And got allegedly escape. got away with it. Yeah. But DMAC, why does it make me laugh so much? You don't I, know, do you? No, I, I no no, I I there's <clears throat> There's something in what that what doesn't kill it. Like we have to laugh through different things, you know. And and this is one of the ones that we all <laughs> experience too. Whether what side you sit on to the justice system that he did get acquitted and mm-hmm. and there was a civil suit and then eventually, like I was saying earlier, it was like, well, you know, the government. Al Capone, um, the tax evasion, that was the memorabilia stuff, and he didn't right, you know, yeah. do that. Try but we also stuff, brought up a point. <laughs> like, I, I, I think you have to laugh too, Neil, because... You do. Because the reality is, who writes a freaking book I'm trying to too. <laughs> on how I would have killed my wife if I... Like, a legitimate... I, I didn't do it. Right? I didn't but do it, but I if do, I did... <laughs> here's like, the book. To me, it's like, come on, man. Like, he's not letting it... Like, you and know, D-Mac, you, you are... I look to you in these moments. I know. Because you are as compassionate I, all a person. All I gotta say is that, is that it's all acceptable. Right? There, thank, thank you. There's no there's no fine line with, with OJ Simpson because what he did is at the end of the day, as my wife says, regardless, he's a, he's an abuser. Right? Forget it. I regardless mean, yeah. of what you want to say, he's he abused women. Right. He's not a good person to to whatever Stay else to, to move on. A regardless lot of, people good people. of everything else. But to me, why is it funny or whatever to laugh? Because there's nothing really that is out of bounds unless you you're you know, unless you're taking light of, you know, Nicole Brown or Ron Gold, you know, in that side of the situation. But OJ's got free reign. It's like any of the Bill Cosby yeah. jokes. And with time. I mean, there's free reign on Bill Cosby and any pudding pop joke and, yeah. and, and you know, the Spanish fly stuff or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And, I just think because it pops you because it's allowed. Yeah. What do you got, KG? And no, I was saying, and with time, people forget about that stuff you know the people of this age aren't as directly affected by you know the oj trial from the 90s and to be honest he kind of became i don't want to say a beloved figure but the 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 general public kind of liked him after he got out of jail and he started getting online you know making uh videos instagram videos and stuff <laughs> those like videos that. were electric exactly they were elect this is this is wild though but but dmac that's why i go to you because you you are one of the most compassionate people of all time of all time and I look to you in these moments to say what is right. And even because you. Li- because in this situation, it's the biggest, one of the biggest jokes, right? Like, I mean, it's it, along the line of the like Kennedy inside. Like, there's <laughs> so, as time goes on, there's right. this joke. So if we don't laugh at it or make fun of it or get back to it, it's sort of a way of all of us as a humanity that experience this to get through it. And make light of it because, right? Exactly. It's because it's so because it's so wrong, and we all yeah. experience it's so outrageous. Like, In my opinion, that's my opinion. Because you look at American culture, right? This man won the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, he ran for two thousand yards in a season. Mm-hmm. He was an electric football player. He got accused of double murder. Fourteen and, games, I think. It, yeah, yeah, like in in a shorter it, like in the prime of his <clears> career, <throat> he did everything that America celebrates. Or hates. Yeah. Like he did it all. Yeah. And that he is a very unique figure in that respect. I'm salty. Damn, y'all are cold AF. That man is dead. That's true. Yeah. Oh, You're wait, right. Wait, 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 wait. Ty, okay. Now compassion comes in. You got it. <laughs> I got a big time issue. If somebody gets a little upset over OJ Simpson being passed away and people making making some fun of it or whatever with what went on in his life and whatever, go. Dude, I gotta yeah. call a flag, flag on that. He, he's, you know, yeah. If any, and and it's not even bad. Like it's, Neil, it's not even bad. It's for, it's actually funny. Like the the jokes we're saying are, are lighthearted. Thirty years ago, he's dead, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Paul- that that statement there, that, that that's a flag more than anything else. 
And then there's the sentiment, there's a, the angle of the audience that says, I blame OJ for the Kardashians. So there's that angle too. It is. Definitely played a role. Yeah, absolutely. They did create one. Close you, Kardashian to this day, allegedly, I still believe. Right? Yeah. He, he gave society the greatest joys <laughs> running for 2,000 yards and winning a Heisman. And the lowest lows. Yeah. Allegedly killing his, his, his wife. Right. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I'm not getting in any legal a role issues. Into the Kardashian uprising, yeah. but also responsible for the Karda- the rise of the Kardashians, yeah. yeah. Which uh, we liked at first, right? But then it crossed the line. When it's a lot fighting. like OJ. Ray J was more responsible than OJ. I will say that. But that is OJ true. definitely played a role. That's fair, Spenny. Yeah. It's all fair. That's why this is so unique, and that's why it's awesome. Yeah, Paul no Thomas, I do OJ. hope our Lord has mercy on OJ's soul. Anyone who believes should be nervous for OJ. So there's that out there as well. Listen. But then there's Kyle who says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What a day, man. I'm salty, says it all. I'm not offended. You're just a bad person. <laughs> hey, uh, right? Mike G. Neil, I will give OJ kudos. He was Oscar worthy as Nordberg in The Naked Gun. He had great he isotoner was. gloves commercials. Yeah. All of it. The gloves commercials are crazy. Yeah. They went hard, didn't they? That's crazy. <laughs> so funny, man. You couldn't make this stuff up. He, if if you wrote a movie yeah. and it was OJ's life, Hollywood would be like, no, nah, we can't do this one. This is too far. By the way, I'm looking forward to that movie. It's definitely going to be a movie coming out about him. But he changed American culture, like it or not. The one, uh, the series on Netflix where Cuba Gooding Jr. plays OJ oh, and Ross plays Rob Kardashian, that's a good series. Yeah, I forgot really that. It's good. Could Came out a couple years ago. Could you imagine the Bronco chase today? Oh no! Like as far as what's because that was before in the day and age media. of social media, it I'm would just talking nuclear to social yeah. media. It would nuke social media. Today. Absolutely, you'd have everybody beside the car, the everybody in the crazy. car. That'd be like Derrick Henry, like allegedly killing his wife and then going on the run. Like, <clears> it, it in today's culture, it'd be it'd be nuts. Yeah. So again, the uh, what is sad about this, and maybe it makes me a bad person, maybe it doesn't, but the OJ jokes are funny to me. They are always funny. Uh, he's a, he was a cut above, all that kind of stuff. Makes me laugh every single time. I don't apologize for that. Yeah. I don't know why it is, but it no. does. But it is partly sad to me because today is probably about the last day that it's going to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you got them, use them all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Honor the, the juice. <laughs> Empty the chamber. <laughs> Honor the juice, everybody. Steve Wilds, have some class. Um, I'm salty. Easy to kick a man when he's dead. It shows your class. Um. Just a fan. And then there's this, just a fan. OJ was never a slashing runner until later in life. He was more power-based at the beginning. He didn't cut and slash till later on. Oh, man. Cobzilla, this is cracking me up. Mike G, OJ had great cutbacks. We can do this all show long, we really and we're going to. Absolutely. We're absolutely going to. This is part of the Black Update, man. He's a black cultural figure. Just right off the rip. I have, a, and like for the urban update later on in the second hour of the show, KG's going to kindly, you know, bring us up to speed. I have a couple questions. We'll take questions from you guys. Yes. And get ready, KG, because I'm going to ask you okay. where does a black community hold OJ now? So get ready. Second hour, what we'll have. What was OJ's have favorite drink from Ray? Slice. <laughs> <laughs> That's still around. Have you seen a slice? I've never heard of slice. Lemon lime slice in a while. That was good. Okay. You're a bad person, Rick. No, absolutely. Um, yes. Wyatt Bear, I almost think his son did it. Now, guys, come on. Let's let's get realistic right. here. Speaking of real, it's as real as it get for the Detroit Red Wings tonight in Pittsburgh. This is the last stand. Now that the I have a couple questions for the people. Now that this, you know, the emotion from the Capitals game has worn off, there is still a very clear path for them to make the playoffs. There is. Yeah, a lot so, of people aren't car- caffeine it, though. I know. I, people have jumped off the bandwagon, no doubt. So we're going to discuss it. Uh, Spenny has the the analytics behind the situation, and I was surprised by it. So so we'll get to those coming up in just a little bit. But first, how about the QB Challenge? I will tell them about the QB Challenge presented by Shake Shack. If you can throw it on a rope, you can win two tickets to this year's home opener. All you have to do is sign up today, scan that QR code, go to wilburnsports.com, or go to any Shake Shack location. It's the QB Challenge presented by Shake Shack. 
Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week, walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore, it should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week, walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, it's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Nashville Hot Chicken is back at Sorokis. They got the tenders, the sandwich, the loaded fries, and the all-new Nashville Hot Pizza. It's a limited-time offer, so make sure you go get it while you can. You can pick it up from any of 11 Sorokis locations or order online at Sorokis.com. Come enjoy the delicious heat while you still can. Nashville Hot is back at Sorokis. I'm such a sucker for Nashville chicken, it's man. So yes, it's good. I, you show up, you just put Nashville chicken on the menu, I'm ordering it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just the way that it goes. Uh, Woodward Sports Network, Big D Energy, Neil Rule, Darren McCarty, KG, Spencer Raxter, uh, L. Richardson in the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Jump in that chat. Get your thoughts out there. Uh, give, it a, give it a like while you're in there as well. Uh, damn, I lost respect for all you guys. What low lowlifes. And L. Richardson, <laughs> I, I said allegedly all the time. All right. I did. It happened, Al Richardson. Oh, yeah. Like that's that's his life. All those things happen in his life. I didn't do it. He did those things. Blame so, just the system. You know, I, I said allegedly, so I did. <laughs> I did all the proper channels. Uh, but yeah, Red Wings tonight in Pittsburgh. It's the latest do or die game of the Red Wings season. But when you're fighting for a playoff berth, that's what it is. And you know, it's it's something where DMac actually. I feel like a proud father sometimes, like when DMAC sends these things to me. DMAC <laughs> sent me an analytical chart. Darren McCarty sent me an analytical chart of the game tonight against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ben, you have that, right? I do. Check this out, everybody. So, so here's the story. If the Red Wings beat the Penguins in regulation, a 44% chance of making the playoffs. If they lose to the Penguins in regulation, a 7.3%. If they beat the Penguins in overtime, a 39% chance of making the playoffs. If they lose to the Penguins in overtime, a 17% chance of making the playoffs. You know what I take away from all that, DMAC? Is this. This is it. This is the last stop on the playoff highway. You have to win. If you lose, this is it, DMAC. Well, this is a playoff game tonight. This is a game seven playoff game tonight. The thing that stood out to me, like what you said, that the only thing that I didn't know was that if you get an overtime, if you get a point tonight and lose an overtime or a shootout, it's not over, right? The percentage of 44% with a regulation win versus 38%, right, with a point in overtime, right? It puts the imperativeness of going on, like, more. Not saying, but that is sort of like the fallback. But bottom line, hey, you got to win. You got to win these four games. That's how you got to be looking at it. And it starts tonight. Doesn't get any easier in Toronto and stuff like this. So you got big, you got big games. But again, you've played big games earlier in the season. Got to bounce back from the disappointment of the Washington game the other night. But you still have task in hand. So you're like you're right there. It tells you that. So I'd be more interested. Like after this is is you know you got to win this game first and then you focus in. But like I said, I don't know. It's the, with the numbers and everything else, it's just more of like Batman hockey. Yeah, no, it, you're you're right. There there is that degree. I kind of equate like if you want to feel, like in golf, they say you got to show me the feels. How does it feel? Give me the feel, and I can pull off the drill. All right, to give you the comp feel, here's how it is right now. I feel as though the Red Wings are down 2-0 in the series, and this is Game Three. Oh, must win. And they're down 2-0. Yep, yep, yep. If no. you lose, you're still alive. 
but she ain't really allowed. No one comes back from three not nil just like three times in history. And yeah, um, yes, I. Uh, that's a great analogy, and and here's the thing: if, if you wanted even even better uh, analogy, is that you're down two, but and you're going on the road. You that's lost it. the two at home, so it reminds me of the O2 Cup. We lost first two to Vancouver. Had to go in there and win. You know the imperatives. That goal from center ice changed the entire. It changed everything. Well, that's why you got it. You're always waiting for that moment. So, so you see how that changed things. So there could be that moment tonight, or taking care of this game, or going out and doing that. That they rally around, right? They they, they rally around. So I said yesterday, Neil, after you left and stick uh, stick in, I looked around the room and I asked, you know, what is your what is your confidence in? them winning tonight also too but i said can we not just wait till next week let's just wait till next week before we start putting people to the guillotine and saying whose blame is it and because everybody seems that they have to have like why does somebody have to be sacrificed i mean it could not just be can we just not look back and say okay this needs to improve because there are there's some glaring there are some glaring things that that i can address right now but what does it do with four games left you know questioning a lot of guys that are in the lineup right now. There's questions to be answered, but I think that that's for next week if we can wait till then. Because if they get it done, then all those questions are sort of minimized. Answer. Yeah, answered. and answered to some degree, too. And certainly we do when the season's over, we'll do the financial breakdown like we do when every team is officially done for the season. We'll take a look to next year and all that kind of stuff. So we, we will get into it, no and, doubt. And for all of you that are are so angst on oh why you know they they you know they choked and they fell and why is this or why is that well we'll look at it because people you know you hear you hear certain things you mentioned it flannels questioning Iserman other people are questioning Lalonde is it players in the lineup is it different things like that we will look at we will break it down just along with the financials and answer because there are questions that need to be answered but like you just said Neil those can be answered in these next four games. Gromit 0237. OJ says if the Red Wings don't win tonight, he will cut them out of the playoff race. <laughs> Which is probably true. It's probably true. Mike G asked DMAC, I keep reading that Stevie May part with Lalonde. I don't know how many times you can go back and say it. What did I say? Derek Lalonde is the coach of this team as long as Steve Eiserman thinks he is the best coach for this team. Until then, like he'll move on. And if these guys have elevated enough and he's not the right guy, then do you not think for a second everybody's at stake? Everybody's, you know, everybody can be moved, traded, cut, whatever like this if it's not in Stevie's plan moving forward. So, yes, again, we'll address it next week. Not time... Not the time to address it, guys. Let's just wait and see how it plays out. Yeah. Uh, and again, checking, checking the stats because I just want to get up to speed on all of this. And really the biggest thing for the Red Wings is obviously the win, but the loss for the Penguins. Like that's, that's where it sits as far as that goes. Um, they are one point behind the Capitals in the wild card race, tied with Pittsburgh, one point ahead of Philadelphia. The Washington Capitals... Uh, as we look at what they have going on. And this is really, you know what, to be honest, like everybody that jumped off the cliff after the Capitals game, and I get it, right, because of the emotion, and I compared that Capitals game to the Thanksgiving Day game for the, for the Lions, mm -hmm. where everybody thought that they were promised this. And when they didn't get it, they kind of threw their hands up in the air and said, wait a minute, I was promised this. It's just for, when you start looking at it again, this is the true game. This is the true, you lose this and it is over. Like, there, there are no doubts about it. I mean, technically you're still alive by percentage chances, but if you're being real, it's over. Uh, tonight, Washington will be at Buffalo. They're home against Tampa. They're home against Boston. And they're at Philadelphia. So it's not like they got an easy run. It's not like they hadn't lost six in a row uh, before that as well. They had won six of seven before that six losses in a row. So they're really volatile. There's no way that they're going through that undefeated. No chance yeah. that they're doing that. So we'll keep an eye on it. And again, it's just, it, and look, like I do want to get into the game and what I want to see tonight. And, and we can talk about puck luck, DMAC, and all that kind of stuff. 
And Dylan Larkin, you know, after the game said, we, we played well, the, we just couldn't put the puck in the net. And that happens in a game. It does. However, it cannot happen twice. Can't, can't happen period, end of story. It can't, can't happen, happen twice. And, and ironically, who is it that you're facing tonight? Old Ned. I just Alex need Nedalkovich. Ned. I just need Ned to, Ned to go full Ned tonight. <laughs> and there you go. So there is some confidence with when you're coming off. So let's take a little bit before we go to break behind the scenes. When you're coming off a game like that where you know that you had opportunity and you're feeling, you know, the confident. Uh, and I said, you know, too many much more perimeters. So look for more, more traffic at the net. But. They did what I asked them to do, and, and that's getting traffic getting, or getting pucks at the net and stuff like this. They, if they have 43 shots on net tonight, they win. Bottom line. And you're not going to let – you're sitting in the locker room, and yes, you might say that's your play to get your former goalie, that you know that you've practiced, and he is your buddy, and you love the guy. You're going to play golf with him all summer. So what is the most important thing? You guys all know this. You're competitive. You want to have those bragging rights when you're standing on the tee and remind them that, you know, hey, remember the one I buried over your shoulder there and, you know, down the stretch? That stuff happens. So there's bragging rights when you're playing your buddies that you want, you know, mm. in this game. And I like the fact that we're playing against a guy that we know, a former guy that I've shot pucks at in practice or whatever. I know I need to get a shot. I played against Manny Legacy for so long. When I went to Calgary, I knew that if I had an opportunity on a wraparound that I could take it, get it to the net, and I end up doing it and scoring. So yeah. th there are these little things, and hopefully it, it comes to fruition tonight for the Wings. No, a absolutely. And, you know, we, we can talk about the game itself, uh, as we said, which we'll get into coming up a little bit in the next segment. And because it, it is, like, it's time now. And I wasn't one, you know, I was disappointed, obviously. I didn't jump off the cliff, though, like most, most of you guys did. Uh, out there and but tonight is tonight they are at the cliff make no mistake about that they are at the cliff tonight and you got to find a way yeah, bleeper I, get off the pot that's it man the only like, way out is through baby i, I don't i don't want to hear about puck luck i don't want to hear about all oh, we got 43 shots tonight is the line don't want to hear it there's only there's only one acceptable result and i mean at the same time if they don't get it done tonight i'm not saying nuke the franchise like some of you are going to say or nuke Steve Eiserman. that that's where I'll get off the highway while you guys keep going I will get off the highway uh, before we do that guardian alarm everybody Red Wings need a guardian in Pittsburgh tonight absolutely I know that uh, Kurt said that they hadn't announced the goaltender yet so maybe guardian alarm will be in there because we know that guardian alarm will offer you customized solutions from real experts professional technicians Take the time to recommend security and automated solutions specific to your needs, but I need you to call Guardian Alarm today. The number 1 800 Stay out. 24 7 professional monitoring. Call anytime, day or night. Know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as it's needed, but I need you to call the number 1 800 Stay, stay out. out. Technology backed by people, your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and people who've been proven to care. Business pleasure, Guardian doesn't care. They just want you to call the number 1 800 Stay, stay out. out. Stay out of the net, Sid. Stay out of your feelings for the OJ jokes. Stay out of getting a lot of saves, Nadelkovich. Just be who you are. Stay out, stay out of the scoring column, uh, Malkin. Guardian Alarm, you look security network. Tell him Big D Energy, we sent you. place to get that big fitness energy it's planet fitness join today for just one dollar down ten dollars a month with over 2400 locations and equipment for every workout you can get in get energized and get going and with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours everyone belongs in the judgment free zone so join today for one dollar down ten dollars a month no commitment cancel anytime
Since 1996, Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast, convenient, and first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. There's 18 Feldman Automotive locations, so you know there's one close to you. And it's across all brands as well. It's not just the Chevy dealer, though they are Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. They're in Nova at Feldman Chevrolet. All brands are represented. Whatever kind of car you want, Feldman can get you taken care of. And guess what, everybody? The service department, second to none as well. Had some... uh, had a car accident, so I had to get my car fixed. As a matter of fact, Feldman Automotive got me in there, got me a rental, got me set up with everything. It was very, very turnkey. I loved it, as a matter of fact. Feldman Automotive Group, everybody. They're goaded in the car game. Make sure you catch Woodward Sports Network. We broadcast out there from Feldman Chevrolet in Novi, Michigan's number one Chevrolet dealer. It's Feldman Automotive Group. Do or die tonight for the Red Wings. And yes, this is accurate here this evening in Pittsburgh. Neil Rule, Darren McCarty here with you. We have KG. Don't forget the Urban Update coming up in just a little bit. Spencer Raxter in the building as well. Yeah. Did you hear about the Coach Cal stuff? About how he sat down with the team in Arkansas and there is currently one player on their roster? On Arkansas's men's basketball roster for next year, there's currently one player. Damn. Yeah, I mean, that's... He did the Dion. That's the way that it works, man. You know, that's that's the way that it works. Uh, Speaking of the Coach Cal thing, um, Scott Drew has said that he will stay at Baylor. So Scott Drew will not be leaving Baylor to go to Kentucky. Jay Wright, you are a Kentucky Wildcat. I don't... I don't think it's going to happen, man. No, somebody will, somebody will do it, though. Yeah, I, well, but somebody... I don't, I don't think it's going to be Billy Donovan. I don't think so either. Yeah, so you see you how there? we're, like, going down the pole here? Indeed. That's what I'm saying. Like, Kentucky fans, be careful what you ask for, man. I bet it's uh, the guy from James Madison. Okay. Good luck. I wouldn't be surprised. Good luck. I mean, they won 30 games last year. They did. Yeah. And that's cool. <laughs> But this Kentucky, man, like this will eat you alive. You don't know what you got till it's gone. That's what I'm saying. And I'm I'm a Cal guy. You know, I just yeah. I am. Because you win in college basketball with players. And that man gets you can say what you want. He gets players. Exactly. Check the lead. A lot of players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had twenty six active players from Kentucky on opening night in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Twenty six. Yeah. This year. He don't miss. He That's don't what I'm saying. Crazy. It is. It's hard to win in the tournament, guys. It like, is, yeah. It's very, very hard. Uh, but we're talking Detroit Red Wings right now. And DMAC, look, man, you know, I'm, I'm kind of drawing a line in the sand. Uh, Brandon Katz, Tampa Bay may rest starters coming down the stretch. Yeah, they're pretty much locked in to their wild card spot where they are. But I will tell you this. I think Buffalo is going to beat Washington tonight. Well, we, I think we they need are. all the help we can get. Yeah. Like, we cool. can't. All we got to worry about is winning the game. That's it. You're, yeah, and, that, and that, you know, my advice... My advice would be you've you've done it. You're you know, seventy ninth game of the year, right? You know what you need to do. It's about systems, it's about trust, let's go out and do your job to the best. You know, there's no for lack of a better term, you know, there's no tomorrow. And hopefully you get these two points and it's the same focus, you know, coming coming against Toronto Saturday. But you gotta it all starts with this game tonight. So and you're up against it, obviously losing Rasmussen, now losing Cop. So I don't care who it is. Different guys have to step up. We said it all along. Are we waiting? You know, is the brink going to do something? You know, better no better time than now. It, that's it. And and there will be. You know what I'm saying? Like, you put up another one goal game, another two goal game, man. I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear about puck luck. Tonight is that night. And again, respectfully, I'm not looking to nuke the franchise if they don't win. However, I'll be disappointed, man. Hundred yeah. percent, I will be. And this this is the game. Everybody, I need all this, quote, scoring depth. I need a sighting somewhere. Someone do something. Like, poke in the stick. Do something. This is it, DMAC. And look, like you, if they lose tonight, you can be disappointed. You can be upset, certainly. Certainly you can be. It's, it's one of those weird spots where, I don't know, am I soft because I think that? I don't should, think should I have the pitchforks out? I don't think so. No? Let me, Spanny, am I being too soft here, man? I got to check with you. About? Like, I, I'll, be, I'll be upset if they lose, obviously. I'll be upset if they don't make the playoffs. But I don't need, they're on path for yeah. me. Like, you they're on the course. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I, my expectations for this team was to make the playoffs this year. 
And so I'll be disappointed if they don't. And, and I will be too. Uh, but I'm not saying fire Eisenman or anything like that. Okay. But you got to you got to rework the roster a little bit. And and I think he will and I think that was in the plan. Yeah. yeah. You know what it is? Trying to get, you know, go from a go from a C to an A or a C C plus to an A. It's how hard is that, right? And 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 I'm going to use for lack of a better term Canadian numbers right where 70s are b's and 80s are a's and stuff like that so you're coming from the 60s right yeah gotta get to gotta get to 80 to an a right to get an a right and you're gonna come up at 78 or 79 which is a b plus which means yes from expectations from the clock being off or whatever (laughs) just uh, end of the season disappointment for everything that had gone down then you got to like look back take thirty thousand foot view and go okay but there's progress and we've moved forward now so it's a lot easier then when you got a 78 or a 79 b to get that b up to an a and that's what we'd be looking for but again these are all the questions of of who who would you keep what are you going to do moving forward that those are all next week right or hopefully in a few weeks because they've made the playoffs after the season those aren't questions now but yes, every all these questions will be answered. So mark them down, keep them to the side. But to Spencer's point, yeah, I expect them to make the playoffs. So right off the rip, I'd be disappointed. And I'd use the analogy like if I wanted to get an A, and I came up just a little short. Apollo says I'll be pissed, and then see that's where I draw the line. Like I'll be disappointed. I can't be pissed over one point, one singular point, or three. I know mean, it's a discussion we've had for a little while going on here. May, am I soft for that? No. I, that? That's what, like, I just, because maybe I'm over logical no. about it. Two things can be true. You can be pissed, but you can also not give up on the team and see the progression. I mean, the Lions, we, we saw it with the Lions. So, I don't think you're too far off. Woolworthsports.com chat thread, Colton's cardboard. We should be upset because we had an eight point lead and blew it. But, Colton, again, do you think that they were a 12 and four hockey team? 12 and, when they went through that run, they were 12 and, do you think that? Because I don't. They're about a 500 hockey team, man. And remember remember how far they've had to climb to get to that? You see what I'm saying here, man? And I know this isn't good for, you know, hot takes or clicks or anything like that. But I, I don't know. I just, D-Mac, I'm just trying to be honest with the people, man. Like, that's that's where I am. I'm not going to nuke this thing. No, I mean, why would you nuke? It's a building process. You're not even You're not even there yet. The, the, the question is, is, did you see progress? Is there prog- There's a lot of progress by different players. Now you're going to adjust and you're, you're going to add and you're going to subtract some guys that are there, but those aren't the questions to be answered now. Let's just, can we wait until we're out at least before all the naysayers and I, I told you so's and everybody being pissed? Wait till you're allowed to be pissed. You know, why are you going to be, why are you going to accuse me of cheating when I ain't done stuff yet? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, worst, the worst thing. You're lying. I didn't lie. Right. Right? You didn't. They, 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 we're not there yet. So why do people go and there? That's, I and DMAC, that. that's the statement there. Everything was what we thought it would be. I don't get the outrage. I Isn't don't. this what we thought at the end 100%. of the year? I want to be in the conversation of the four, three, three, four, five teams in that conversation. I mean, like... We can go back and cut clips from the beginning of the year because that's the progress. At least you're in the conversation in the bingo balls for Gary Bettman, you know, at the end of the year. So it's progress, but you can be disappointed. I mean, in golf, Neil, in golf, right? You haven't broken 80 or you've broken 80 once, right? Okay, so par 72 for everybody out there. And you're five over in 18, mm. right? And you make double. And you shoot 79, right? Which, which is your second time you broke 80. Whatever you're, oh, you electric. Got it. You'd be electric. No, no, no but, but then but you're going to be pissed because you couldn't have scored. You doubled 18, and you left it out there on the table, and it could have been your best round ever. You, but you, little do you go back and see, well, look at how I've progressed and what I picked up. So to me, it's, it's more or less where you've come from. To look at where you've got. We use the analogy on this show of 75. So where are they at? You know what I'm saying? Because they haven't reverted. Right? They've just slowed down. Is that fair enough? 
You know what? They saw 75 north of 162 exit, and they punched it up there to about 85, <laughs> and they got going, and then, and then their maps were coming that there's a speed check ahead, speed check ahead, and they had to slow it back down. Uh, Colton says, call me impatient, but we've had mediocre teams for 10 years now. I'm just tired of watching other team wins. Yeah, you're Thanks, impatient. God. Yeah, yes, all of you are impatient. Does it change the fact of do you want it back correct so you were not back here? And trust the guy. I, again, please, anybody who's got a better suggestion than Steve Eisenman running your organization, please give it to me. Please. Right. <sighs> No, I, I 100% I'm with you. We're all impatient. Uh, Gromit 0237, one step forward, two steps back is not progress. Repeating last season ain't progress. How is this repeating last season? Yeah. Remember when they got cooked in February last year and it was over? What was you saying? You just win a face-off last year. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. remember that? Like, win a face-off, guys. See, Gromit, like, that's, that's where you lose well, me. Here's How the- can you look at this and say that this this year is the exact same as last year? You can't say that. And, and here's the thing, right? Louis Bishop says, no, Darren, that's soft as hell. Hey, at least we are in the talk. No, this is the Detroit Red Wings. It ain't my Red Wings. It ain't that Red Wings. Those Red Wings you're talking about is unacceptable. This Red Wing team, what the hell have they done? What have they done in 10, 10 years? Not a- Nothing. So you can be impatient to get it back. But, but I'm, I'm sorry. The reality is that this Red Wing team's Deserve, they're lucky that we're talking like this. Because what have they done in the past? In the NHL, it, t- it takes different to rebuild to get back there so that you have a shot. Mm-hmm. It ain't about getting there once and having your shot and then it going away. That's not it. That's at least what I'm trying to relay of how Steve Eiserman is putting this team together. And it's not your old Red Wings. It's not my Red Wings. Because you're right. To me, as a player... <clears throat> I would never say that. But as a fan and as a former player watching this team and watching this new NHL and watching, trying to translate it, sorry, but this is where you're at. Yeah. Hey, and guess what? Premier Pet Supply ain't your run-of-the-mill pet supply store either. No, they're not. They are the best when it comes to pet supplies. Premier Pet Supply, hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers. With one major difference, they're family and locally owned and operated for 30 years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com At work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. I love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merch. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Now, rule here for shop.woodwardsports.com. The new line of Red Wings gear is out. The new line of Lion stuff is out. Are you Brad Holmes guy? Get the Brad Holmes guy t-shirt i do i gotta get that one before the draft to. get on that neil get your stuff together you get your stuff together too. shop.woodwardsports.com check out the new line baseball football basketball hockey it's all there there's a woodward sports golf line as well shop.woodwardsports.com all right keeping it pushing everybody big d energy woodward sports network neil rule Darren McCarty, KG in the house. Don't forget the urban update coming up in hour number two. Trevor James, the sporting director of Detroit City FC, will join us coming up right around noon. We'll talk to him. Uh, Some USL media news that I feel I'm a big reason why. We'll get to that. I'm kidding, but 
<laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, mean, I don't you know. You are USL Media. What's that? I say you are USL Media. That that is true. I guess I guess it is. Spencer Raxter here in the building as well. Check out the Woodward Heavyweights Shout five out. to seven. Shout out. Big shot. Woodward heavyweights. Shot. You guys are in the mix with CJ Gardner Johnson, huh? He's, he's Easy's just, going to work. He just keeps yapping, man. Oh That's man, all the guy does a fight reunited. Just uh, keeps yapping. Reignited. Are Easy and CJ Gardner Johnson going to go to blows? They should. For, um, for charity. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> for, for charity. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> for charity. I like that. Um, Tigers, they're rained out today. Uh, they made that official not too long ago. They didn't even make you go down to the park and sit around and buy food and beers right. first. They actually uh, went ahead and did that. Yeah. Uh, but Scott Harris made some media rounds, I guess you could say. And, and look, I need to come to grips with something, DMAC. I do. And KG, you'll like this because this is growth. You know I was upset about the, the off-season tact, mm-hmm. the off-season plan of attack for the Detroit Tigers. But Scott Harris talked about it. What was he on again, Spenny? Uh, it was the Mad, Do- Mad Dog Show. The Mad Dog Show, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Scott Harris, which is kind of weird. Yeah. It's kind of a weird fit, but whatever. Scott Harris was on the Mad Dog Show. He said this about the Tigers' team construction. You gotta be pleased. Your bullpen's been superb, and starting pitching has been very good. So all things okay for your franchise after ten games. Let's start there. Go ahead. Yeah, we got off to a fast start. You know, we have a young group, uh, so you never really know how how this group is going to transition from spring training to the regular season. Uh, but I was really pleased uh, how we did on that first road trip. You know, we got um, some really good work out of our bullpen. They made some really really big pitches in tough spots. Uh, our starters gave us a chance to win every night and our young lineup came through they scratched across uh, some really important runs for us late you know riley hit a big home run in new york uh colt had a had a big opposite field double in new york um uh Abanez came through in chicago and then when we got home Gio Urshela punched the ball down the right field line to help us close out the a's for our, our home opener so um overall been been really impressed with the, the young group staying mentally tough in big spots staying calm determined and and scratching across runs late um, but uh, good start in Tigerland right now. 100%, 100%. And some obviously uh, a little expectation level here uh, for this franchise this year. I mean, obviously you've had good second halves uh, and in spring training with, uh, you know, Minnesota maybe not spending as much money and a uh, division being wide open. A lot of people out of high hopes of the Tigers. So a little bit more of an expectation level this year, Scott, on your ball club. Let me get your thoughts on how your young team is going to handle that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if expectations internally are all that different this year. Um, we have to stay focused on the step right in front of us. You know, candidly, this this organization has been through some rough patches in recent years, um, and we haven't really earned the right to talk about playoff first yet. Uh, we've earned the right to try to beat the Pirates today, and so that's what we focus on internally. Um, you know, I think the middle of our lineup is populated by young hitters, and with youth comes variance and unpredictability. Um, but I think we got to keep giving these guys opportunities. We got to keep helping them make adjustments to, to find their way and be consistent every night. 20 seconds. And we got to keep leaning on the veterans we brought in this this offseason. Guys like Mark Canna and Gio Urshela, who are both off to really big starts at the plate, but also really helping mentor some of our young hitters in the clubhouse. Um, so, you know, I think if we stay focused on, on the here and now, we stay focused on putting together long stretches of competitive baseball, the rest of those expectations are going to take care of themselves. All right, that was Scott Harris on the Mad Dog Russo show. Russo's a voice pusher. Yeah, he, he is. is. A big-time voice pusher, man. I, I can never get by his screaming. It, it's a high pitch, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, Even when he talks, it sounds to like me, he's yelling. To me, it's that higher pitch of Pharrell. Pharrell's lower, so he's easy to take. Right. It would be like if I talked like this all the time. <laughs> With emphasis. M- maybe I should. Emphasis on everything. KG. <laughs> <laughs> this Tigers team. No, but Scott Harris, DMAC, pretty much without telling you, this is what they're going to do. Yeah. So, like, the whole free agency thing, the whole – I would even guess that that's going to extend to the trade deadline where, you know, hey, I would cut him a pass and cut the organization a pass if when the trade deadline rolled around, they kind of – you know how there's always that overpriced veteran that a team's just looking to get off of and, and yeah. save – you know, save half of that $25 million salary or whatever. Yeah. If the Tigers would have done that, if they wanted to say, hey, let's see where we are 
and then maybe we can pluck one of these you know high cost veterans out that are on the last year of their deal, kind right. of a rental situation. I I would even ride with that, Dmac. But from what I heard there. That's not going to come to fruition. They, this is what they are, and this is come hell or high water, man. This is what they are. You brought up money, and I checked out. We were talking <laughs> to the Tigers. They ain't spending nothing. Nothing. Yeah. And Scott hit, and so and here's the here's the saving grace. What what were we talking about, and what in his resume is Scott Harris? Right, he's a youth, like like big time in in bringing young guys uh, yeah. uh guys from the caribbean you know mm-hmm. guys from the island like you know what i'm saying development guys so you know what this is what he's what pretty much the mandate has been is uh go use your magic and develop a bunch of stuff because guess what yeah see this credit card checkbook whatever yeah it's empty right now bro you ain't mm-hmm. doing it so so get used get used to it what you see is what you got maybe maybe that's also good neil Right on a team like this, that means call ups. Yeah. That means some of these guys in Toledo, maybe the Scott Harris approach is to give these young guys opportunity earlier on. Because yeah. you know what? When you don't have the money guys in front of them, right, that have to play because they get played, except for Javi Baez. Yeah. But you know what? Things like that, it, it gives you more flexibility to give these guys a shot. So hopefully, maybe in the long run, and especially with the way this division is, um, that that's a good thing. Yeah. And then we can develop a little bit quicker and then we can get there and then hopefully, right, this is just a one year thing and they can go back to spending and he's told that, hey, yeah, develop but I, now. I don't yeah, no no no. I'm not I'm getting, getting that vibe. Look. We're not getting that vibe, nope. bro. But what else do you have? This is a wait and see. You right. know exactly what task at hand is for this year. So get used to it, like it, love it. You Here. know what? Let's let's Look. root on these guys, but it is what it is what it is. I don't think there's any uh, help coming except from the farm. Yeah, they're trying to build the foundation, and this is why I was trying to tell you this, Neil. Like they're trying to see what they have. But hearing Scott Harris talk, you don't think that this is all part of the plan? You don't think they have some kind of plan going forward? Yes, they aren't spending money this year, but you don't think that they're that's a reason for that? No, I think this is the philosophy going forward. That's and that's my issue. So you think they won't spend money at all at no, no point? I don't really? think so. Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Because you're going to see them as, okay, so you say that they're in with their young guys, right? Like yeah. that's where they stand they right now. to see what they have. So to see what they have, their quote, spending money will be locking those guys up. That will be their spending money internally. Sound familiar, right? Woodwardsports.com. Yeah, but it's di- that's a different construct, Kenny. Yeah, it's a different construct, man. How different? You're, ne- you're, not, you're not shackled by a set. You're not... You're not bound to this like you are in the NFL no, or any others. You're not bound to it. True. It doesn't have to be that way. It's only that way if you make it that way. And they're making it that way. And that's my problem with it, man. I think it's a concerted plan. I, it, they want to see how far along they can get with this young talent to see where they need to spend money. I think that's, I think I think it's that's the this. whole plan. And, and you guys have heard me say this before. You heard me say this. And look, Scott Harris is excluded from all – criticisms or complaints that I have. He's excluded. I, I I seem to I like to I like what I think he's about. I like that. So he's excluded from this. The issue for me, Kenny, is when you go down this road like they're going and you have an opportunity to improve things and you don't, it's easier for them to write a check to Scott Harris or the director of scouting yeah. and write one check than it is to go out into free agency and write two checks or three checks or four checks. I get it, but there's that's the there philosophy. There will be a point where money will have to be spent because you can't go and just not spend money at all. Like at some point, you what will. they're doing right now. And, and look, you don't think that maybe I, I'm trying to give Chris Illich the benefit of the doubt. You don't think maybe they kind of learned something from the Javi deal that okay. You know, we we need to we need to be more analytical about how. No, 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 no. You need to trust the, the dude you hired to do his job. That's true too. But you don't think why why'd you bring him here if you don't trust him? I don't think it's that. I think he does trust him, but they just it's not the right time. Just like you said with the Red Wings, it's not the right time yet. No, but KG, it's the time whenever you wanted to make it the time. There's no cap. Is this a world? you're in the lower third in payroll in baseball? If you can't win in this even league doing if that. They added. A, a veteran talent is this a world series team let's say they got uh jd martinez or or matt chapman no is but this could it be a division team? winning team it could be but they could be a division winning team as is okay they got off to a fast start 
But they're in third place in the division right now. I understand. We still there's some things you're, that the Cleveland Guardians got off to a fast start too. I the understand. Kansas City Royals are off to a fast start. There's some things that have to shake out first. We okay. will have the answers that we need, but going forward, this is a, a analyzing process. They're trying to see what they have and where they need to spend money. I feel like it's all part of the plan. That's just me. All right, uh, WoolworthSports.com chat thread. Uh, here is one thing I won't have, and. The, the chat just was going too fast there, and I lost it. Um, oh, here it is right here. Daryl says, Torkelson is starting to seem like a bust as far as hitting. Now, hold on, yeah, everybody, with not, that. Let's not do that. He's the one guy I trust. You know why? Because I've seen it with him. Yeah. I saw a 30 home run season with him. Yeah, it's not easy He did exactly. Now, was I, was I worried it last May? Yes, I was. But then what did he do? He put a 30 home run season on the resume. Mm-hmm. Spencer Torkelson, I am not concerned about. He's just one of those guys that needs to see a lot of pitches. And, and it, it happens in bunches with him. That's the way it works. He's a young player still, man. I He's the last guy I'm thinking about. I've seen it. To quote Rick Ross, he's shown us. <laughs> he's shown us before. He's the last person I'm thinking that, about. Drop. Like this Torkelson thing, because he seems to be next, right? So, like, the people that are piling on Derek Lalone right now with the Red Wings, Torkelson is the Tigers' Lalone right now. I believe that. Yeah. Like, for whatever reason, he's the guy. I mean, I know the reason. He's the 1-1. But he's shown you before. Yeah. He's got a 30-home run season. And, D-Mac, what did I ask from this Tigers team? I said, I got, you got to hit home runs, man. He was the one guy that did. Yeah. Yep. No, 100%. 100%. I, you know, it's perennial. What it, Whatever you're talking like torque, like it's Miggy, the perennial slow start and stuff like this. I don't think to the fact that when we talk about him, he's not going to figure it out. But they need more power in the lineup, definitely. Yeah. We've said that all along, right? They need a they need a bat yeah. behind him or whatever like that. It's a lack of fire, lack of firepower, which is going to hurt this team. And the fact that the bottom line is we could have gone out and paid ten million or whatever like that for that bat is the frustrating part. It's so, true, but will you but be stunned let them your figure growth? It out. Will you be stunning your growth as a as a downside to that though? If well, it you was just Tur- it was Justin Turner when the Twins signed him at third oh, well, or whatever. Yeah. That was that was that that was the guy yeah. that you could one year deal put him in the lineup in the in I get the four or five or whatever. But at third base now you didn't. I don't think you've gone wrong because Gio Rochelle has been yes, thank been, you. been a great good replacement, but he doesn't have the power. You need right, right. somebody there. If we're just looking for Torque to, to hit bombs or Riley Green to hit bombs. It's going, or, you know, yeah. Jake Rogers hopefully runs into him. Uh, you, you need more more hitting no matter where mm-hmm. it is. You know, Parker Meadows batting 0-8-0. Oh, oh, yeah. But that's, like that's why I think it is a part of the plan because the additions that they've made have been smart additions. Mark Cannon has contributed. You didn't believe in third base that much. Gio Orshella so far has contributed. I know we got a lot of the way to go, but so far so good. So I'm just, I'm riding the wave. That's all. All right, hey, somebody that's hitting. That's Detroit City FC. When we come back, we'll be joined by Trevor James, the sporting director of Detroit City FC, the sporting director of Big D Energy as well. He carries two jobs. He's a hardworking man. Uh, He'll be here in studio. We will talk to him about everything that's going on with DC FC. Planet Fitness, everybody. We're live at the Planet Fitness Studios. You guys know what it is. A dollar down, $10 a month. Get you access to your home, Planet Fitness fitness you want to be a baller and a shot caller the black cards in play 24.99 a month one dollar down it's the same setup everybody you get access to over 2,500 planet fitnesses around the world spenny what are we on today uh, back back day for spenny i got the cardio and the lift in as well you can do it all at planet fitness tons of cardio equipment tons of weights clean facilities go take your shower get on about your day that's planet fitness go to planetfitness.com join there pull in the parking lot there's over 50 of them in metro detroit you find one close to you pull in the parking lot join there it's planet fitness mr darren mccarty planet fitness where your fitness is essential buying your first film in chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point a to point b it's a place for first memories some big some small as she grows you're not just buying her a chevy you're buying into a feldman family with more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation feldman just keeps rolling you, you smell that 
That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Love Woodward Sports? Love wearing clothes? Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids, all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. The new glorious ice water bubble hash pre-rolled now with a diamonds constantly pushing to create the best can of experience. The perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust allowing flour with only the highest terps making the best better. Glorious Cannabis, check us out at your local detailer or GloriousCanna2Ns.com. All right, hour number two, everybody. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, live from the Planet Fitness Studios. My name is Neil Rule. That guy's Darren McCarty. He knows about winning championships and stuff like that. We got KG in the house. We got Spencer Raxter. And as we do every Thursday, Thursdays with Trevor. That's right, the sporting director for Detroit City FC. Trevor James joins us here in studio. And Trevor, uh, for you guys having a week off, there's been a lot of Detroit City FC news this week. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm good. Obviously, we come off another... Great result last week, and uh, but we've had our challenges this week, and a lot of news coming out uh, in the last couple of days. So, just trying to keep it, uh, keep it in front of it all. Absolutely. Um, before we get into the the big announcement uh, involving Detroit City FC with with Liga MX, uh, certainly I called the match last week. I've had a lot of fans ask about it. Uh, we saw we saw obviously Elvis Amo leave the match. We saw Reese Williams leave the match, and the fans have been asking any update on their condition, what yeah. their story is. Yeah, it's. Um, you know, it's not the best news. Uh, you know, obviously, this is a time where the roster will be tested. You know, we did pick up two injuries, and um, and uh, first with Reese, Reese fractured um, his cheekbone and bones in his face. He oh had, wow! He had surgery to on Sunday to repair it and and uh, put plates in there. Um, he'll be out for four to six weeks, probably in playing. They say he can probably run in a week or so. Okay. So uh, as long as he doesn't trip, we'll be fine. All right. Um, uh, so he'll be back training within a week or two, uh, but but won't be up for selection probably four to six weeks. Okay. Tre- so Trevor, can you sorry? Can yeah, you yeah. just take us through watching like what it, as sporting director different uh-huh. than coach right because you got to adjust on the flying stuff. But as I got to imagine as a sporting director watching your team and everything's going on and then all of a sudden and you know at some point somebody's going to get hurt or whatever but this happens do you automatically start thinking of your roster do you start thinking about guys that you might oh I might have to reach out to this guy or that this agent that agent. how does like Trevor James when this and it just happened on the weekend so you're watching the game and this happens how does the process for a sporting director or a guy that oversees a team like go into action i guess yeah it was um as i said it was, it was a crazy couple of minutes or five minutes where they both got injured very quickly um i think from the from the off we knew they were quite serious injuries um so right from that point down my mind was thinking i've got to get on the phones tonight i've got to see what's out there see if we need what we need to do can we change anything can we bring anybody in do we need to bring anybody in so obviously waiting for the medical people to give me the, the, the information but from that point you're also all already looking ahead to what you might have to do Tre- you know? Trevor James joining us here sporting director for Detroit City FC so Trevor um so we got that handled right there to get that update uh some news from the Detroit City FC organization uh the return of the international friendlies to keyword stadium as detroit city fc will be hosting pumas out of liga mx mm. and, and certainly trevor there's been some electric moments uh for detroit city fc keyword stadium all of it and i have to ask you uh, for those that don't know liga mx the top league in mexico story tradition been around you know obviously for a very very long time and and look this is not new to DCFC. We've done this before. Clubs that were playing in Syria A ah, have come to, to come to Keyworth in the past. And I've never asked this question to anybody. How does that come to be? How does that work? Well, it's it, it's more to do with, with Sean Mann, the CEO, who deals with the exhibition games, friendly games. Well, I knew it was a big deal, too, because Sean Mann did his hair impeccably uh, for the announcement. Absolutely. So I knew it was he a big did. deal. He did. He had a... He had a 
um, a Puma's haircut for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for what he needed to do. But, but like Darren said last week, you know, we're reaching more international um, markets, you know, for players and fans. So, as you said, it's a, it's a big league. It's a big team within a big league right. who, you know, obviously contact us and want to come and play. So we're, we're attracting bigger, bigger uh, targets now. So I think that's the way it comes about. The more we do, you know, the more we've seen, the more visible we are, the more other, other teams like Pumas want to come and play us. No, and, and I got to think too, obviously, right, at the atmosphere. And the and the fact of of, of and watching the the league and stuff like that, where where it is that a different atmosphere. Would you say like it's it it's a lot like the European atmosphere, but it's still a little bit different. But it's the pride and stuff like this. But the fact that you just brought up that these these organizations, these teams, are reaching out to you. Yeah. That 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 means that uh, different things and that. And you were mentioning stuff about about the TV contract or you know the fact that we lose Neil down here because he's broadcasting. You know soccer games from uh you know across all different <laughs> facets mm-hmm. like and and that's to me is the big is the biggest thing and that is that the number one goal and i know that obviously putting the product and we just talked about injuries and stuff like this but being able to be in the sporting director and not on the bench to be able to have these conversations with these dignitaries from these other leagues as the footballer guy to be able to to get them in a little bit quicker. Absolutely. So. You know, and that, the networking helps, you know, with, with getting games, getting players, being aware of more players, even, even in their market. Um, so a good, you know, conversations with, with these guys only helps us build well, for you, the future. You mentioned last week, right, about players talking to players, mm-hmm. right, community, how that's worked. Now it's, now it's organizations and teams talking to teams about, hey, you got to go check this out, or mm-hmm. hey, we haven't seen this, and... The bottom line is you're answering phone calls from across the world, I yeah, see. Absolutely. I mean, they're used to playing in front of 40,000, 50,000 people in, a, in a, a spacious stadium. So, you know, it'll be a real, you know, experience for them to come into Keyworth and, and put up which Atlas had to when we beat them. So it's, it's not an easy game for them. So, um, so they'll go, go back and, and talk about that. You know what it's going to be like? And, and, and I... And I would have to. I would love for somebody to ask these players that play in there because when you when you end up playing, and I'll take for example, you get to the to the NHL, the highest level, and you're playing in front of twenty thousand every night, a, a night go. or whatever like this. But Keyworth and stuff reminds you of of where you grew up and the grind and playing in front of everything else. I think of the pride that these guys get, and not only the atmosphere of what really soccer makes it yeah. and stuff like this that these guys will thrive on, and hopefully they will. Be a little bit surprised of the home field advantage that because uh, I know the guard's going to bring it out that day. The chance will be going. So it's but it's cool because if well, we look at that and I think in the NHL you see that in exhibition games where where there's that there's NHL teams going to small small places in Canada and in the U.S. and stuff for exhibition games. And I think that 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 it, it bodes well not only for you know, here, our city and stuff like this, but also to the players to bring them back to sort of where they came from. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. Talking with Trevor James here, sporting director for Detroit City FC on Big D Energy Woodward Sports Network. So, Trevor, uh, some other news from the USL. Uh, for those that, that missed it, uh, Louisville City hosted Indy 11 on CBS National for the very first time in USL league history. The TV ratings for that game were about 40% higher than LAFC playing LA Galaxy Damn. on a national network as well. What is it about the USL, Trevor? Now, I know it's because they have great commentators. That's probably the fabric of why the ratings are so high for the USL. That I know that's it. But other than that, Trevor, what is it about the USL? Why does it resonate with fans so much? Why, why do fans love the USL so much? Well, it's funny because, you know, I, I read the article and, and, uh, and obviously saw the numbers. And, and, again, I've been thinking about it, and it's, it's just that I think that if you compare the two leagues, the USL Championship is a more exciting product. And I know that sounds obvious or biased or, or whatever right now, but um, we're in the USL Championship. The teams go out, and I think every team goes out to win, and they have a game plan to go out and win the game. I think in, in MLS, initially, I think teams, because points are a lot closer with their structure, 
I think teams go out not to lose. So I think you'll find in the USL Championship, I don't have figures in front of me, but there's, there's more goal my instance, there's goal, more goal action, there's, there's more excitement in the right. game rather than a, a bit of a chess match game that you might see with the MLS. So that's, that's what I've been thinking about on the drive-in, thinking about I think it's a more exciting product to watch, uh, and obviously the game of the weekend uh, says all that. No, and and it's the announcers too. You can say that, Trevor. <laughs> well, you, I was going to say it. I thought you 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 covered that. But uh, well, you can say it. Yeah. Oh, well, I <laughs> no. will say it. Then. <laughs> hey, I like the a great laugh track is always is always well timed. Good job on that. Thank you, KG. <laughs> uh, but Trevor, U.S. Open Cup coming up next Tuesday at Keyworth, kind of a weekend off for the squad and look. Uh, kind of gives you guys some time. You talked about it. Reese Williams expected to be out maybe four to six weeks uh, mm-hmm. with with the fractures in the face. Uh, I guess that weekend off kind of comes at a good time for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. It's good to, that uh, we have a you know a little bit of a break. Obviously, we expect a real tough battle on Tuesday in the Open Cup. So you know we wanted to get everybody rested for that um, as we can. I didn't I didn't mention um, Elvis into your first question. Yes, he's he has injured. He's got a He's either got a groin strain or a groin tear. He's had an MRI yesterday. Uh, we'll get the results by this afternoon. Okay. Um, obviously, we're hoping for a strain rather than a tear. Right. Uh, but until we get the results, we don't know um, how long he'll be out for. I mean, it, as far as, and again, this is my own un, unmedically educated mm-hmm. opinion. Uh, when, when I saw him go down non-contact, obviously, you always fear the worst. Yeah. I guess, like, at initial look, that's probably the best of what it could have been when you talk about non-contact injuries when a player goes down because we all, right away, you start to think ACL, MCL. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that is good, as good a news as it could have been, right? Yeah, yeah as I said, um, uh, we weren't sure. Obviously, the medical team weren't sure yeah. if he had a, had a tear or just a strain. So we're hoping for a strain. It'll be a shorter re- um, recovery. Um, but as I say, we won't say till. Um, so we get the news this afternoon. All right, Trevor. Well, we do appreciate your time. We appreciate you coming in. And, and there was a lot to get to. Tons of news coming out uh, as far as Detroit City FC is concerned. But thanks again, mate. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Great. Thanks for having me again, guys. Nice Thank you. There Thank he is, you. Trevor James, everybody. Sporting director for Detroit City <sighs> FC. Sporting director, uh, of course, for Big D Energy as well. He does that job for no money, too. That's huge. Yeah. But it's huge huge news, right, to what he said, is that like the wor- world's taking notice. The best te- te- best league in Mexico, that's this, this soccer team, man, like it's, it's unbelievable from where this thing was when I signed on back in 2015 to what it is an na- international yeah. brand now. It's, it's wild. It is absolutely it takes, wild. Just takes you a little bit to get them to that level. Neil, yeah, but nice it, job. Let me tell you about Swiss Insurance. Good news and bad news. Bad You're news welcome. is insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. Good news is Neil's still doing DCFC. No, Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Call my buddy Mark today at Swiss Insurance, 800 417 uh, 417- Four one seven seven, or go to SwissINS.com. Tell them Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports.
then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, I got the champion, everybody. That's right. It's the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Try the Chicken Shack Sandwich for free. All you got to do, $10 purchase, so you can grab a shake and maybe a crispy crinkle fry and use a promo code Woodward, and guess what? Your Chicken Shack will be free. Use a promo code Woodward in person, online. Download the Shake Shack app today. You can order it on the app. Just slide in, pick it up, and bounce, everybody. That's a way you can do it. The promotion's available in all seven Metro Detroit locations. Again, use a promo code Woodward. Get yourself a free Chicken Shack sandwich with a $10 person purchase. It's Shake Shack. Keeping it pushing, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network, Neil Rule, Darren McCarty, and of course, we have Spencer Rax, Derek KG in the house as well. Don't forget that urban update coming up in just a little <laughs> you bit. You won't let him forget it either. No, he, he, <laughs> if you have any questions, KG, it's his duty once a week. He'll bring us up to speed on the black community. I will. I'm he will. I got something to show you guys in a second here. Um, I don't know why I get nervous whenever Spenny says, if, <laughs> if he leads it off with breaking news, I'm cool with it. Right. But if he says, I have something to show you. Yeah. I always get nervous. It's not breaking news. It's pretty funny, though. Uh, here we go. Uh, yep, as you know, yep. our guy Easy is working at Suburban Ford now. Yes. And he just posted uh, a picture on his story that... Uh, Shout out, Easy. It's a good uh, good, good way to get his name out there and definitely sell some cars. Nothing says I, B.O.J., like purchasing a new Bronco. <laughs> Oh my God! So shout out to our guy Easy. Hey, big you, shout out to Easy. If you need man. a car, we're undefeated, Easy. Oh <laughs> if you, need, if you need a Ford, you need great. a Bronco, hit up our guy Easy. He'll hook you up. That's I'm, great. I'm, and that's yeah, that's an Easy story. That is on Easy's Instagram story. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not like that? That's Look. great stuff. I, absolutely electric. <laughs> absolutely electric. What a day, man! <laughs> this is a landmark day. It is. I got to definitely got to share that one. Yeah. So shout out easy. They got the white Broncos in stock. Oh, yeah. Probably selling them off the shelves yeah. now, man. <laughs> they should make an OJ edition. Yes, they should. Um, John Effing Lord says, that's funny. Uh, Jeff says, easy's got no chill. Uh, Cody Engel says, easy's the type of guy that will sell you a lemon. I don't agree with that. He's, he's good salesman. Yeah, well, if, he, if you want lemonade, he will. Right. I mean, yeah. He's like, what do you need? He's just the guy that's going to sell you what you need. White Bronco, bring Wh- it home. White, white Bear, White Bronco, bring it home. Bring it home. home. <laughs> Would you push a White Bronco, Spenny? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, by the way, Feldman Automotive gave me a Blazer as a rental car. Hell yeah. We're, we're twinsies. I parked behind you again. Nice. I like it. So, so we're out there. SUVs, black on black. That's what it's all about. That's how we operate, everybody. All right, Jared Goff, DMAC, in the news. And you have the clip, right, Spenny? Yes, I do. And, DMAC, I want you to listen to this clip. And, look, you've done this. Now, you've, you've done the dance with Detroit sports media uh, for a long time throughout your career. You, you've always spoken kind of respectfully about everybody. You, you understood that they had a job, you had a job, and you kind of coexisted with everybody. I want you to listen to what Jared Goff had to say about the Detroit media. I have this, like, I probably need to drop it pretty soon here because I'm going to hopefully be in Detroit for a long time. But I have this thing with our local media where, like, they they almost, like, relish in, in negativity at times. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what gets clicks and that's what sells. But it it's 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 no longer what they need to live in. Like, right. hey, guys, like, we, we have a good team. We've had success, like... We can be happy about that. We can celebrate that and not have to write about how, like, we're constantly the underdog. Like, no, like, teams are going to be gunning them for us now. Like, we're, we won the division and all that. And, I, and I'm probably overthinking it in my head just because it's the chip on my shoulder and the um, competitor, the competitor in me. Yeah. But um, in that moment, I was just giving that guy a hard time. I actually really like him. But I, uh, I think that's great.
Uh, and what what podcast again was Jared Goff on? I'm not sure. You're not sure? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shout out to that podcast or whatever. Ding, Frank. ding, ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Hit every check mark. I mean, and it's a little different from a guy that grew up in the organization or was drafted around here and stuff. He came from some sort of success and has sort of changed, you know, the narrative since it's been here. If we want to say about you changing the narrative with DCFC and making them international, well, Jared Goff has put you up there to be hunted. Right? And, yeah, as an athlete, yeah, yeah, the job of media is to get clicks. So you develop these relationships um, with and and find out especially with the beat writers and the guys like like who you can trust and have relationships with you know like the guys like you know like a Maz, a Sean Belige and a Terry Foster, you know to to guys that you know you find out early on that because don't get it twisted athletes aren't dumb we'll manipulate the media which way we want them to go too, right mm. for a storyline and a narrative so. Um, I just think the fact that that's your quarterback, that's your leader, that's the guy moving forward, and yeah, everything that he said is true. And it's sort of he let you in, in into behind the scenes because everybody's human, right? So if you you know somebody writes something and somebody reads something, they get a little bit heated, but they're all in it together to understand what the narrative is. And I think that that's all through the organization, you know, preach from the coach, from the GM to the quarterback and stuff. That's your leader. He knows everything he said is spot on. Do you uh, disagree with him at all? No, I don't. No, it's... Look, I just approach it from a reality-based perspective, all right? And and I think Jared Goff knows this. Like, And he brought it up. He's like, I know the negativity sells and stuff like yeah. that. And, and Because it does. And here's the thing. Like, I always laugh when we get back to this discussion. And I'll exclude Jared Goff. DNC ENT. He's not talking about Big D Energy. Y'all will cheer if he ties his shoes correctly. <laughs> well, DNC, it's funny. Like, you know, for me, you know, when, when a guy is second in the league in passing yards and fourth in touchdowns and wins two playoff games, DNC ENT, yeah, I'll say nice things about him because he performed. Uh, when a team, when a, when a GM takes over a team and has Franz Nielsen and Jimmy Howard making thirteen million dollars of a seventy million dollar cap, and he comes in and takes that over and takes us from like the worst team in the league to and hits every progression the way, yeah, I'll, I'll celebrate that because there's proof, there's a resume, right? Now, when a guy like Javi Baez is out there, no, I will not celebrate that. So yeah, I take I kind of take exception to that one. I do this weird thing, DNCENT, where I just look, see what I see, and then I analyze it and go from there. So sorry, man. Yeah, I will. I will be happy with Jared Goff. I will be. Everybody else is too, because he's a good player. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. You may you've been programmed to not accept that. But guess what? If you have an ounce of common sense and can think critically, you have to look at it and say, wow, he was second in yards and fourth in touchdowns? Yeah. He must be pretty good. You can't deny that. Top like team. You can't argue it. You see what I'm saying? So I do take exception to that a little bit. But here's the bottom line with the media stuff. The problem isn't even with the media. And I see people here talking about other networks and things like that. But guess what, everybody? That's what you want because it gets clicks. Who's clicking on it then? You say you're not, but somebody is. You see what I'm saying? Like, the media is never going to give you what you don't want. The media is not the enemy. The media, the media is a mirror to you. What they put out there, what you consume, and what you consume and what you don't consume, guess what they do? They take a look at what you do consume and give you more of that. It's what you want. Yep. It's what you click on. We have years of analytics here at Woodward Sports. If I sit out here and say, and look, if I put out a clip and say, I'm happy with Steve Eiserman, I'm happy with where they are, I'll be disappointed. Will that get clicked on? No, it won't. No. I tell you guys that it won't get clicked on. But guess what does? When I talk about Javi Baez swinging out a slider that's three feet outside, you guys love that. You can't get enough of it. You see what I'm saying? Like That's why, again, maybe this is bad for me and, and something I need to work on. Maybe I do need to pump negativity a little more. <laughs> Maybe I do, because it's what works. We're in a click-based society. You guys click on it. It's that's, not the media out the, to get you. It's giving you what you want. The media is a mirror to society. You bring up a great point. Yeah. Right? And that's, you got to figure out where you're getting your information. Like, that's my problem, too. I don't 
give a shit about clicks. Right? I don't give a shit. I'm going to give you my opinion. You're going to always see where I, like, I don't play the game. That's probably wrong, right? So who's playing the game? And is this just understand that's why you have to use different people because some people will just lead you along, lead you along, lead you along because you'll keep going back, going back. Yep. That's the game. Hey, don't be mad because playing the game better, but you're right, Neil. But so the fact is, that do you listen because you want to hear what somebody has to say because that lets you know where your opinion goes, right? Brandon Katz and Sam Flannel. Yeah, Kat, I don't I can't believe I brought your name up. The right. fact is, is if they agree with me, I get up. I, get, I, wonder, I wonder what's wrong with me. <laughs> because I don't want them to agree, but I, I want them to be consistent because they're consistently, in my opinion, opposite of what I, polar opposite. So I can tell, okay, good, good. We're arguing, we don't agree. That means that I'm in my right mind. I don't know if you guys use different people in life like that or you have friends like that yeah. that's what the media really is then you got to figure out is this person there for clicks or is he there for information that, that that's society life but it, to everybody's on youtube what's the free hey this is for entertainment purposes only please hit the subscribe click notification yeah i mean it's right that's true i mean it's just the way it is so to me that takes away from reporting because i think half the time people just you know, put it out there because that it's going to get a reaction. Even more than half the time. Thomas Perry says, nah, I can't stomach mainstream media. Neil is biased. Thomas, somebody's clicking on it. Yeah. Somebody's clicking on it. Like, this is one of the, you know what this reminds me of right now? Like, when something's, something's a mess in the kitchen, and I go, to, I go to my kids, I'm like, so who made the mess? Nobody made the mess. Just like nobody's clicking on these stories that get millions and billions of clicks, right? Nobody's doing it. Who's dishes? Nobody yeah. ate. No, no, nobody right. ate, huh? This, right. this dish got here by three, itself. Three right. of you kids, yeah. I just watched you eat the meatloaf, yeah. but one of you just can't put it in there, but nobody But ate nobody it. did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, Thomas, it's okay. It's the like, world. It's the world, man. It is, seriously. Like, that, that's my thing. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. I, I've always done this, right? This is how I've always approached life, right? I'm, you tell me how it is, and I'll find my way through it. Yeah. I'll look at the situation, and... It's best to give your toughest jobs to the laziest person because he's going to find an easy way to do it. That's me. <laughs> I'm going to find an easy way to get by, man, because like that's that. the way that I work. <laughs> it could be the toughest situation in the world. I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> you know, like work, I, work smart, not hard. 100%. You know, like it's somebody's clicking on it. Can, can you guys agree, though, right? But, For those to, you, but to agree to, that's the game being played in life now. It's yeah. all about clicks. It's all about likes. It's all yep. about, it ain't about information. It ain't about the truth. Yeah, they don't care about the You know, I pieces. mean, maybe 2024, because Cat Williams, you know, cracked it open that we're getting the, some truth. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, no, it's not about, hey, this article, first person people ask, how many clicks did it get? Mm -hmm. Not the fact is, what was it about, and did you agree with it? Or, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just... It's ass backwards, bro. Uh, see, like, let's go Red Wings Sparty. Nobody's watching the Pe Peacock exclusive games, except for the NFL playoff game where they got, like, 5 million new subscribers just that day, and they said three and a half of them stuck around mm -hmm. after the trial period was over. Yeah. Like, let's go Red Wings Sparty. Like, that happened. You know what I'm saying? But I put effort into that, so that's the difference. Quit hitting them with facts, Neil. So that, that's the difference for me anyway. But no, I – hey – I'm curious to get into this discussion because I want to know if people agree with that. Media is a mirror, just like our movies. Like, we complain about our movies. You think they're making a movie you don't want to go see? Yeah. Now, sure. sometimes they do, depending on who's in it. And how much money they got to spend. But, that, yeah. That's it. Let me tell you about Woodward Sports merchandise. That is right, everybody. We got you covered. Get ready for the NFL draft. Get your Brad Holmes guy t-shirt. We have it for you. Shop.woodwardsports.com. Dot com. Get draft ready. Get Red Wings ready. Because everyone will be back on the bandwagon tonight. If they can get that win in Pittsburgh, get your LFGRW hoodie. Baseball, football, basketball, hockey. It's all there for you. Go to shop.woodwardsports.com. 
Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Sports love wearing clothes, then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends, impress your boss, impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Everybody start your day with Wake Up Woodward, 8 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, live right here on the Woodward Sports Network. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG. Every morning, they cover all Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, live fan interaction, all on Detroit's number one sports network. Of course, it's Woodward Sports. Keeping it pushing here, Big D Energy, Neil Rule, Darren McCarty, Spencer Raxter, KG. Uh, just moments away. Coming up in about six minutes or so, KG's Urban Update, the initial episode. Yeah. Of KG, I have a couple of questions. I need to be brought up to speed on a couple of things in the urban community. I got you. Now, I know you do. That's why we're doing it. Um, WoodwardSports.com, chat thread, Art Vandalay, negative press sells because everyone wants to read it. It's going bad for them as it is for the reader. There's a reason people rubberneck on the highway after an accident. Right, Art? So why can't we just admit that? Everyone's got to say, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. No, it is you. It's exactly you. Um, WoodwardSports.com, chat thread, Matthew. Neil, movies suck nowadays. The 80s and 90s movies are 10 times the movies they are. Yeah, well, not, that's not even close to being true. It, the Sorry. box office numbers disagree with you. Yeah, right. Like You obviously haven't seen Dune 2. It's the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Yes. Shit's on Return of the Jedi. Sorry, d Meg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it is. is a fantastic movie. Apollo says, this is Jared Goff's team. Make no mistake. Hey, D-Mac, by the way, you know what everybody glossed over in all this? I hope to be in Detroit for a long time. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he did. So Everyone yeah. glossed over that, and he mm-hmm. said it. He said it with a tone. Tone recognized tone. Oh, yeah. That tone was, we're talking about it, and when the timing presents itself, we're going to pull the trigger. Yeah. It's happening soon. And and did it and it's not a guy, right, where we've seen a guy who's about to get paid or um There was in, a calmness the, about it. There was calmness of matter of fact that um on the same page organizationally, right? Like we've talked about it. Didn't you get a like the just of Neil is that don't worry, we talked about it. I'm good. It's about us, right? So for everybody who has ever thinking that they wouldn't resign him or whatever. It's going to get done when it's supposed to get done. To me, that just tells me that he's more back burner. Amal Ross St. Brown is more front burner. Doesn't it tell you that? Yeah, but they all, they all play off each other, though. No, no, that's the, what, yeah, but, the golf's the first down. Like, golf's going, don't, hey. No, we got cool. this. Everything's cool. When it's time, you'll know. I want to be here, but we got to take care of some of the other guys first. That, and that's leadership, too. Now, also, too, his bank account's a lot bigger because he's had bigger checks in his career, but that's also recognizing that Amon Ross St. Brown, right, and that's who I'm talking about, needs to get his big paycheck before Jared Goffrey signs. That's self-awareness in the, or in the building also, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. Goes a long way. WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Uh, in the vein of OJ, Rack says, they click him, but they ain't admitting. <laughs> Just along the lines of the glove don't fit. You must have quit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that is out there. I just thought it was interesting and you know, I'm tired of the the media, movies, all that stuff. Like we're getting mad but this is classic America, right? We're getting mad at you blaming you for giving us what we want. We just don't want to admit that we like it. Yeah. So I just I just think that that's a pretty funny uh that's a pretty funny 
moment. You guys ready to put some people in a coffin? Not an OJ? Why not? OJ took care of that on his own, I guess. He did. So um, it is time for rest in peace. Usually on Tuesday, we were remote. It's Thursday instead. So uh, we'll spin this really, really quick. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Spenny Raxter. So I got some some shit to talk about these Uh-oh. losers Uh-oh. that have been in my mentions for a while. Rest in peace to Oregon State football. Oh. You bums. Goodbye. Good riddance. Good day, sir. You obviously lost your head coach to us. You obviously lost your starting quarterback to us. You obviously lost your starting center and starting tight end to us. And guess what you had left? You had a fantastic running back. Fantastic running back. Ran for over 2,000 yards and 16 touchdowns in his first two seasons. And he just entered the transfer portal. He's going to be a Spartan, baby. Just wait on it. Oregon State, enjoy poverty. Goodbye. Good riddance. Good day, sir. Your fans suck. Your school sucks. Beavers suck. Goodbye. Damn. Yeah, that's that's fire. Spenny right set fire. Almost had to play the whole song, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, real quick, DNC ENT. Neil, does negativity sell? Did the network boom during the one? Did the Woodward Network uh, boom during the one and six start or the NFC Championship? Well, obviously, NFC the NFC Championship, something that hasn't happened in sports here yeah. in thir- twenty five years. DNC ENT. So, like, that's yeah, that had something to do. It was unprecedented the run. And guess what? A lot of other networks had a lot of success, and even we had success on some clips and stuff like that when you sold the fear part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the way that it works, everybody. KG, who are you putting in the coffin? <sighs> it took me a while to come up with something, but I, I figured it out, man. Rest in peace to trying to predict the Lions draft strategy. I'm done. <laughs> You're done with <laughs> I'm sick. If I see another mock draft, shout out Broder. I do like Broder's big mock at 9 o'clock. But besides that, pause. But besides that, I'm 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 through, man. We got two weeks left. You were saying before the show, like, we're, we're tapped out, man. Like, what else can we, can we talk about? And maybe it's because this year there's no particular need. So there's really, really no predicting where Brad Holmes is going to go. Um, nor can you be mad at whoever he picks. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm going to make I'm an effort. It. I actually have this weekend off. I'm going to dig deep this weekend. When we show up Monday, we're going in. Yeah. Spenny, we're going draft in. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip the switch. I'm okay. going to drop the hammer. We're right. going in. So when I show up here on Monday, yeah. we're getting into the draft a little Everybody bit. Everybody else got a three-month head starting on you, though. But but that's fine. I'll catch up. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of changes, really. Yeah, not After a lot of changes. the combine... You're just looking for scandals that'll change draft positioning. Absolutely. Pretty you much. just want some negativity. Yeah. Once you find some negativity, you'll be good. D Mac. I'm just ready for the draft. Who are you putting in the coffin? Don't I'm, say the Red Wings. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit. You gotta bear with me here. Okay? Because this person doesn't deserve to be put in a coffin, and I like this person personally, but professionally, I must Ooh, this is go gonna be good. into the t- I might have to play the whole song. I'll pull out something special. Alex Nedeljkovic, the goaltender for the Pittsburgh Penguins tonight, formerly one of ours, who this year, if you've looked at his stats, is 16-6 and six with a 9.07 goals against average. I'm putting you in the coffin for tonight, kid. Oh, we need preemptive. You to put it down. That's it. I'm putting the voodoo, DMAC, curse on him, Woo. right? I'm not powerful enough. To be able to put a goal in Alex Dabrinkit's skate, but maybe I can put the kibosh on Alex Nadalkovich and Dabrinkit can capitalize from that. But Alex, I'm sorry, but today, only today, you're going in the coffin. You can come back out tomorrow. He did. I like it. First and ever, D-Mac. First ever. I that mean, just that just put a wave of calmness over me about tonight's game. It's Alex Nadalkovich, everyone. We are intimately familiar with his game. That's true. We know, and it's I the biggest that moment. Karma button. There it is. D Mac spoken into existence. I like it. Let's hope. I like it. It is on tonight. I can't wait. Uh, lastly, here, um, I'm putting in the coffin, and this is going to upset Spenny. Oh. And this is an NBA take. So you guys, you know, whatever, stay with me. Somebody, again, I hate the NBA. Yeah, millions of you watch it. So I don't know who that is. But anyway, All Spenny, right. I'm sorry. Your Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, as far as the uh, NBA championship uh, is concerned. Can I do a quick pivot here? Sure. I, was just about to I wouldn't say it's my Minnesota Timberwolves. I love Anthony Edwards. I hate the rest of them. Yeah. I hate Cat. I hate Rudy Gobert. I hate Kyle Anderson. 
they do have a very dislikable team. Just, just I love Anthony Edwards. <laughs> okay. Your Minnesota Timberwolves <laughs> and their NBA championship hopes are officially in the coffin. They went to Denver last night and the greatest one of the greatest centers in the history of basketball. Yep. Talk about Nikola it. Nikola Jokic. Talk about again, it. Again. The Joker. 41 points, 11 boards, 7 assists, 16 of 20 from Ooh. the floor. Yeah, he was cooking. That was a good game. He cooked the Timberwolves, and, and he mainly cooked your boy Rudy Gobert. Yes, he did, he which done. I love the, to see. The defensive player of the year um, got destroyed. The Rudy, Gobert, Rudy Gobert is the most useless player in the history of the NBA when he's not three feet from the basket. He literally could not do anything if he's not three feet from the basket. That's and he got facts. dunked on by Christian Braun, the which was awesome. The dude started COVID. Yeah, and yeah that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that is and facts. he started COVID. And he started that is COVID. factual. People talk about Wuhan and China and stuff. like. No, no, no. Rudy Gobert started COVID. Yeah, yeah in microphones. Joking around and, and coughing and shit. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Touching all the microphones. Then. But, hey, Two man. days later, league shut down. Small, small, shut down. small flex, I always laugh back because remember they were here? The night before, and they stayed at MGM. And John Forsland, you know him, who does the Carolina, Carolina uh, Hurricanes broadcast, yeah. stayed in that room that Gobert was in. No so he way. got he got Damn. Uh, two weeks. He was at MGM. He got sequestered. You know when the <laughs> lockdown. And yeah. Stuff. Damn. He stayed in the room that they stayed in. The night he gave before. a man COVID through a hotel room. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Rudy Gobert sucks. I hate. Uh, yeah. He, uh, real bad. quick, Jay Thurman Thomas broke OJ's rushing record at Buffalo. Up next for Thurman, getting away with killing three people. Now that's that's yeah. impressive. Oh, that's, that's, you went a long way to get there yeah. on that one, yeah. bro. That, I gotta throw. He thought about the, that one. You get a yellow flag, not a red one, but I mean, like yellow card. That was a little too. That was aggressive. That was overly like, he aggressive. He went a long way. He to thought get that there. one out. Definitely. He did. Like, All right, they, well, you know, charging in the NHL when you take like five steps, he took yeah. like eight. He did. He took eight. <laughs> uh, urban update with KG. The initial episode. So get those uh, urban questions together for KG. We'll get to some yeah. of them. Tell them about. Tell about Lady Jane's, D-Mac. Awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut. That's Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Stop in, sit back, relax. Let one of the Lady Jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great. Walk in any time, seven days a week. Lady Jane's, wicked awesome. Buying your first Feldman Chevrolet is much more than buying the car that will get you from point A to point B. It's a place for first memories. Some big some small as she grows you're not just buying her a chevy you're buying into a feldman family with more than 700,000 vehicles sold from generation to generation feldman just keeps rolling we don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in detroit but we do have a guy named darren mccarty on our side woodward sports Sports love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at WoodwardSports.com. Just click on Shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Congratulations to the real coach of the year, Motor City Dan Campbell. Just put your head down and go to work. It's about to be fun, man. It's about to be fun. Woodward Sports. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. This is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC. Same great service the customers have come to know. And trust on Woodward Ave, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Let's Stamper in Dearborn today. Let's Stamper.com. Let's Stamper Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. All right, keeping it pushing here. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Neil Rule, Darren McCarty, Spencer Raxter, KG. Uh, real quick, uh, ran to the bathroom during the break, and I passed Maz in the hallway, and he's like, hey, you guys touch on OJ? He was like, <laughs> he was crushed. Yeah. yeah. That's he, his guy. I know. Warthal James. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we've talked about it. Uh, it is time for the initial edition of the Urban Update with KG. And this is our chance. KG brings us up to speed with what's going on in the black community. Uh, some things that we may have missed. Yeah. You have questions in there. You can put them there in the chat. Yeah. Within reason, we will get to them. Yeah. 
Uh, this is a you know this isn't going to quite be the Black Santa episode of Big D Energy, which will bring Terry Foster in over the holidays. Right, right. You know he will. Oh, you know he got the update on Black uh, Santa. A hundred percent, he does. <laughs> but KG, uh, welcome Thank to you. the initial episode of the Urban Update with KG, and and I think I'm going to start it off. Uh, Alan W didn't even get there yet. The chat is about to be so out of pocket for it this. Is. It's on you guys to police each other. Yeah, let's let's lay some ground rules. So this is the first time we're doing something like this. So I'm taking more of the open forum approach. I didn't have anything specific. So my esteemed panel is going to help me. Uh, Spinny, he's he's entrenched in the culture a little bit, so he'll be my honorary black. Hey, and, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, like we we will debunk <laughs> some stuff, but I'm not gonna debunk every stereotype. I'm not going into henny ingredients. I'm not breaking yeah. down the different types of chicken. We're not breaking like, down cool cigarettes yeah, or anything let's, like that. Let's, let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it above respectfully, board. Respectfully, but I will do my best to give you the black representation answer to what some of your questions may be. Uh, can I start? Absolutely. Because I need to be brought up to speed on something here. All right. What happened to Kanye? Like, <laughs> like we were we were fine. Everything was cool. He had the deal with Adidas. Everyone wanted the shoes. It was like the Adidas Jordans. Yeah. And now, you know. I, He's dragged Meek Mill down, I've heard. Yeah. Like, what, what has happened to this? All I know is, like, I use the phrase, I'm the Meek Mill of Pontiac. I can go in, I'm, you know, I'm stamped in any hood. Clear. Like, I can go through there. These are facts. But then I hear KG tells me you probably want to disassociate yourself with Meek Mill. Yeah. <laughs> Break down Kanye. Where are we with Kanye West? What happened? A lot has happened to Kanye West. What hasn't happened to Kanye West? To me, he's, he hasn't been the same since his mom died. And then you add that to the fact of the Kardashian relationship taking a mental toll on him over years and years and years. And then he fights so many battles. He's at war with the fashion industry. He's at war with the music industry. He's at war with anybody that says anything like, you know, contradictory to anything he believes. So all that combined has, has produced the Kanye that we know and somewhat love today. People still love him because of how abrasive he is. He says... What he feels. The music it, still slap. Like through all of it, the, the music, music still does slaps. Still slap. Not not exactly the same as it used to be, but it's still Doesn't good. Feel like he used to. For it, sure. It's still good. But Kanye, he he's messed up, man. He's he's mentally just just out of there. He's off his meds. Yeah. He's off his meds. He's clinically bipolar. He's you know name one genius that ain't crazy. That is a no, Kanye I, bar. Well, it's and it's true. And he yeah. is one of the musical geniuses of our generation, like undoubtedly. Hands down. But you dude's a psychopath. And <laughs> He, and he has an obsession with Kim Kardashian. Yeah, he does. Because his new girlfriend and the way he trots her out in them skimpy ass clothes, yeah. she's, she might as well be naked. That's true. And she looks exactly like Kim. I don't know. He's going through some kind of crisis, but man. He but did, uh, he did have a bar and say, There's a thousand yous, there's only one of me. That's true. Which That's is, a great line. Which is great. <laughs> and that, he's proven it. He's walking out with another Kim K. But yeah, I just, like, Kanye, just get back on the, get back on the meds, brother. Please. He's, uh, yeah, it's tough. Walk around Chicago, man. Just go to some of the local shit. Just yeah. get back to your roots, man. That's what I'm saying. And and so D Mac, so far so good with the urban update. People have kept it respectable in the chat, and you have to admire that, D Mac. I'm I'm sitting over here policing it. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all good, but we're get we're getting answered. And I, and Spenny, I think you bring up a, a great point, right? Where we always talk about Kanye, you know, stuff about met, but there's mental health, and the fact yeah. is that. And I'm not making light of anything, right? Mm -hmm. Because obviously the truth will come out. I'm big on it. But, you know, you bring up a good point is that, you know, you look to the why and, yeah, he hasn't been right since his mom passed away, everything else and stuff like this. But it seems like 2024, like Cat Williams told us at the beginning of the year, like the truth will come out. It will. And it's, you know, it's society, social media, and it's only inevitable where there's a camera everywhere. That is true. You're going to learn more truths. Uh, K KG, here's a serious one. This is a good one. Okay. The away fan. KG, why do more black folks like hockey? I've been to quite a few games, but I hardly see any black people. Why is that? That's a good question. Um, You like hockey. I do like hockey, but I I'm, I'm, would be considered a casual. It's not something I you know indulge in all the time. I do like playoff hockey a lot, but... I don't know, um, especially seeing that there's more black players in the NHL. I know it's still not like a huge number, but there's definitely been more of a contingent of black players in the NHL. I don't know, man. It's it's I can't. Spinny, you got hockey's I, expensive, man. I, I think it's expensive. expensive. I think it's something that if you do not like, because that's because for saying that, that there's some of the most fierce, great, and in the yeah. chat, 
But the NFL black is expensive fans too. That there is, but they grew up with it. Yeah. They learned at a young age how to watch it on TV. Maybe yeah. they went to a game early on, so they got into it. Maybe they were born when the city was popping because because they had a good team yeah. and stuff like this. So they were they were drawn into it, but they they were educated on it. Right, right. That's, right, that's a good point. It's a lot easier, and it's it's the toughest sport. It's the greatest sport live. Mm-hmm. It right? is a good sport, but life. it's the hardest sport to watch on TV because to follow the puck and and my, right. my my boy Aaron, dude or whatever like that, he can't watch the game. And yeah. When we watch when the t- game's on TV, I'll be like, oh, oh, and he's just like, I'm mean, gonna see that. I don't even know where the puck is. Right, but live it, you can watch it. Right, to it's your a different point. experience. So yeah, to your point, I think a lot of black people just don't understand the game. Like I, I got more involved in hockey once I understood the game. Yeah. And I started watching a little bit. And luckily, we've had winning hockey in this town. Um, I remember the 08 Red Wings. Pavel Datsuk was probably my favorite player, you yeah. know. Um, so, yeah, like, it, it's just a lot of black people just don't understand the game. And, and they don't want to take the time to get into it. But more should because hockey is entertaining, especially playoff hockey. Like, I wish I could have played hockey growing up, but I just we could not afford yeah. all the hockey gear moving around. Dude, stuff it is like, crazy. It's yeah. just it sucks. I, I do have to apologize because I wrecked it by speaking on it. I said it was going great. <laughs> Things were going well with yep, the urban update. Good job, and I you. jinxed it because we have uh, thoughts like this. Two birds, both stone. Black people don't like the cold. That is not true. That is, is true. Okay, sorry. That's 100% true. Sorry. We do not like the fucking cold. Why do, who likes the cold? I don't I, know either. I'm Canadian. I don't like the cold. Yeah. But that's, no. Yeah. Nobody does. But the difference is, okay, black people, we, you know, we, we bundle up for the cold. Y'all embrace that shit. Like, 30 degrees, y'all hey, going outside. Just I don't. stare into his shorts. booth, Benny's yeah. booth. He's, uh, he's one yeah. of the worst. Yeah. I'll, I'll wear shorts. With shorts and stuff. I try, I try to wear shorts as often as I can. Yeah. I do not. I do not celebrate it. I don't enjoy it. I can't. I stand with the black community on that. So it's funny. One of the days, uh, I think it was Big D, Sean Belegian, uh subbed in, and it was me and Kool Aid. And he kept saying, like, you know, or well, we said that, you know, black people, we don't do the 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 shit where fans, you know, they shirtless in the cold. You know, kind of like the Bills Mafia and some no, because you guys do. have common sense. Exactly, but. Um, Sean Belisian swore up and down. I'm sure there's been one black person that's done it, so we challenged him to find someone. <laughs> and, and he ain't got back to you yet. still ain't got back to you. <laughs> Shout out Sean Belisian, man. He's Shout out man, Sean. But, Sean's the goat. But yeah, man, uh, it's, it's just not going for us. So it's that. It's like this from Matthew. Why are black people afraid of water? Uh, <laughs> white people with sticks is getting some run. Why would we go towards water if we can't swim? Pretty simple. Th- if, there I, it is. if I can't swim in the shit, I'm staying away from it. Uh, Lorena Rio says black people also know where to run in a horror movie. Absolutely. That is true. We're the first ones to run. I got to know my question, right? Seriously, the the Detroit side. Where's the black community at with the Detroit side? Where where are we at? Cash made a diss song about it. Exactly. They think it's mid as well. And they think the graffiti were probably better the sign. You, sorry, you, you said that on your own because you wanted graffiti. I'm sorry, Neil, but if you go look at some of the comments that's been going around on Instagram and things of that nature, people are not liking the Detroit sign. The hood, um, ain't, the hood ain't rocking with it, man. It's okay. It's not stamped. And I uh, heard there's, there's <laughs> another five signs that they're planning on uh, dropping, so I don't know if they'll be different from this sign, but five they're signs? not off. Yeah, so they're going to put one at... I-96 and Telegraph, that's kind of by me. They're supposed to put one at 8 in Greenfield. I heard uh, they're putting... There's, there's like three more locations they're going to put. The same to. sign? Yeah. I don't know if it's the same sign. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, Greg Rounds wants to know. And this is this is kind of... Because I was going to ride off with this before we go to the break. But Greg Round says, KG, did OJ do it? OJ absolutely did. That. He did that shit, right? <laughs> he, did, did he, that shit. he didn't come out deathbed and admit anything, did he? Not that we've heard. But listen, no. don't be mad at us. Be mad at your justice system. They had <laughs> all the evidence oh, in the world. Yeah. And they did not. You know what? I endorse, yeah. I endorse that comment. Thank KG you. said it right there. Don't be mad at the black community. Right. Be mad He's at your judge. justice system. Out of y'all feelings, man. OJ, whether you like it or not, he affected American culture with that trial. Period. Blank. End of story. All right. I think it was a good first episode. Yeah. Now, as this evolves, KG will bring things to the forefront. Will. And we yeah. will leave time for Q&A as well. Yeah. I enjoyed it. What's this your thoughts? Nice. This was nice. Um, as long as we keep it, you know, a little keep G, simple, you know, yeah. I, I feel like we'll, we can make this a thing. Okay. Um, 
Let's get off the highway right now. As a matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, right. like well, you know, when you're getting off the highway, highway, you might want to go visit Dispo <laughs> Dispensary today for exclusive new deals and experience. A team that curates an unbelievable atmosphere mixed with fresh inventory from Michigan's largest variety of products. Save the day for four. 20 at Dispo Dispensary. Dispo is putting on epic events with over a thousand, yes, a thousand giveaways at each location, and there's a ton of them. Stay tuned for more details. Dispo Dispensary, DispoShops.com, your local cannabis plug. Come to any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men and claim your throne for a king's treatment from one of our talented stylists. Open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Just get to a Lady Jane's today and receive a precision haircut, scalp massage, hot lather neck shave, and a hot towel treatment. A haircut should not be a chore. It should be an experience. And that's exactly what Lady Jane's has to offer. Open seven days a week. Walk-ins are always welcome. There's always a location near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. It's wicked awesome. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? (laughs) See what I did there? Go Red Wings! From Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan and Jerome Bettis' Bus Stops Here Foundation is proud to present the 3C Sports Conference to educate, inform, and inspire players, parents, and coaches in our local communities. Featuring impactful speakers like Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, and Adam Schefter, April 24th through the 26th. For more information and to get tickets, scan the QR code on the screen right now and sign up today. All right, final segment of the show, Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network. Uh, some feedback on the Urban Update with KG. I see a good question, too, but go ahead. Greg Rounds, I'm proud of us. I am, too. <laughs> You're on Mark M. Great job. That was fun. It's only uh, going to get funner, trust me. Absolutely. Um, Shad216, Neil is the ambassador of black people. No more Jesse Jackson. <laughs> Jesse Jackson is not the emperor of black people. He's not. I'm just by any stretch of the imagination. All you need to know, I'm good in any hood in the yes. You are that, good. That, that's a solid resume to apply for the job. You stamp. That's it, man. Apologize. Uh, when, you, when you can just go around freely and got to check in nowhere, you know, you know, that, you got it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, you said there was a good question. I missed it. What was it? Yeah. And uh, not to take this political, but uh, Bitcoin fifty one kg Trump winning the black vote this year? Question mark. Wow. I hate to say it. I probably, yeah. He is absolutely winning the black vote <laughs> this year. And it's, it, and it's because of Kanye? No, no, no. <laughs> He's Kanye's guy, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But so don't, it don't doesn't hurt. Get, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> that, that. That shit was crazy. But um, as evidenced, you know, um, I, I stay on 96 <laughs> right off or right off of 96 uh, along Schoolcraft. And I was driving by. I, I saw a house with a Trump flag. And you don't see a lot of those in the hood. But. Big ass Trump twenty twenty four uh a flag right there. But yeah, Trump he he black people like people that go against the grain, people that, that buck the system, people that are entertaining and that, that say shit that, is that, funny. that they feel, you know, like and that's that's why Trump has the black vote. Say whatever you want about him. He is funny as fuck. He like, is it might not be the best quality for a president is like your number one quality but he is hilarious and i hate to say it the stimulus checks helped kick up that black vote for sure i um, just gotta be real i gotta be real mike oh neil is an uncle neil am i an uncle neil no you're not okay uncle. i didn't think so i'm either. not getting that but. uh art vandalay neil <laughs> is the mackinac bridge to racial harmony <laughs> d-mac that's all we try to do right the mackinac all we try to do here Inform. that's it um, we see any more good ones in there? No, as a, it's a good time to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, it's a very Before good time to get out of here. I and I knew <laughs> when I saw you reading that one, I knew what was going to happen. Yeah, I knew what was going to happen. It's time to exit. Red Wings, Penguins tonight. It it's it. This is it, everybody. This is it. D Mac put the hex on Nadelkovich. I just need Alex. Ball. I just need Alex Nadelkovich to remember that he's well, Alex Nadelkovich. Oh, there it is. There we go. Three nothing after one. Okay. Remember who you are, Ned. Yeah. 
You may have fooled some people, but you ain't fooled You'll us. You'll never fool mm -hmm. us. I know you, Alex Nadelkovich. I wanted you out of town. <laughs> and you're out of town, and you are in the White way. White buyer, White Bronco, bring it home. All right. There you go. Home, for DMAC, for KG, for Spencer Raxter, I'm Neil Rule. Thanks for tapping in. Big D Energy, Woodward Sports Network.